Hello everyone, today we are talking with Ivan Imhov. He will tell us about blockchain, NFT and cryptocurrency. Hello Ivan, what is the blockchain? The, the blockchain is a digital version of almost like an accounting ledger. It uh, records every transaction and it does it sequentially so that ultimately you always know where a transaction has gone. It's a, like a chain and each piece of the chain is all of the transactions that have been validated at once and they're related to all the previous validated transactions and all the previous validated transactions and it creates a chain. So if I give you a dollar and then you give 50 cents to somebody else, each transaction is recorded so you can always track back in an immutable, unchangeable, irreversible, unerasable way every sub-transaction that ever started from the origination of that blockchain. A lot of people don't, don't really understand the different types of cryptocurrencies that there are out there. Um, Bitcoin has grown to be a store of value. Um, it's due to its nature. It was originally actually something that was almost like electronic um, peered um, currency or ways of, of exchange. The birth of cryptocurrency is truly part of what we call Web3. It is part of being decentralized. And the key principle is that it can operate in a trust less environment as opposed to a trust in environment and i think that's the biggest difference that people have a tendency of uh, forgetting why its genesis is so important when we send money across the world or when we get our paychecks put in a bank we have to trust the bank to hold that money for us or basically we have a debt with that bank the bank owes us our money we have to trust the bank we have to trust the government that the one dollar bill is worth the one dollar bill when we send money across the world, we have to trust that the bank and the transfer systems will get that. So you have to trust everything. When you hold art, you have to trust the company that holds that art. When you use Google or Facebook, your data, your information, the transactions, you have to trust these systems. And the genesis of blockchain is that you don't need to trust anything. It just happens. And that's quite revolutionary. So an NFT relies on the blockchain technology, but on a blockchain, you have what people call a cryptocurrency, but we'll call it probably more like a token um, because it's not always a currency. But in general, it's the same principle as if I have a dollar bill and you have a dollar bill and we exchange the dollar bills, then we both still have one dollar. They are fungible. In other words, I can mix all the $1 bills around the world. They're still $1 bills, right? And you still have $1. But an NFT is a non-fungible token. And a non-fungible token is the fact that you they're completely unique. So they're still recorded on the blockchain. And they're like your dollar, but it's like if you drew a beautiful heart on that dollar, it makes it unique. So now your dollars aren't interchangeable. So a non-fungible token is a unique identifier or a unique identified token uh, on a specific blockchain. It seems that NFT is everywhere, but how exactly it is used? Can you share with me some examples? And right now we're still at the level of the NFT is art, and the NFT is collectibles. So you've heard of your cyberpunks, your board ape, the board ape yacht clubs, and, and, and so many other ones, and celebrities have gotten into this. The extension in the future of, of how this goes will go into more utilitarian uses. But right now, it is absolutely fueled by um, scarcity and, and hype. And we've seen a lot of that scarcity and hype die down. The next phase of an NFT is a lot more interesting. And so now, what we're seeing in this tiny little birth of the NFT environment is utilitarian values to NFTs. And that means, for example, that people with NFTs can enter certain events or event registration can only be done with an NFT. NFTs allow you access to communities. NFTs can give you royalties and it's being explored in things like the music industry quite a bit, where artists can actually receive a piece of revenue directly programmed into the NFT every time an NFT, like a song, gets played. 
And they're revolutionary concepts because they don't need central organizations like a music company to do. Okay, Ivan, I understand what is the blockchain and the NFT. And what about the current trends in this sphere? I, I've been playing in, in, in the cryptocurrency market since 2016, 2017. And you ride the waves up and then you go into this incredible phase of denial that when it starts going down, you're like, wow, it's temporary. And with every new industry, you will have massive volatility. And if you've never gone through a bull and bear cycle in crypto that generally is pegged towards the happening phases of, of Bitcoin, and Bitcoin is still the granddaddy, decentralized, immutable, uh, grandfather foundation of crypto, then you don't know what you're in store for. And so having something that will go up a thousand percent is pretty common in cryptocurrency, but often it'll go down 95%. And for many, it'll go down to zero. So the market is very volatile simply because of human emotion and investment cycles. We get over enthusiastic markets, press love it. People make a truckload of money. And then the human emotion of not wanting to miss the wave kicks in. And that's what happened in 2017, 2018. I saw it right up November 24th. I couldn't believe it and it kept on going, but I couldn't accept that it goes down. These cycles happen every three or four years. And the question is, will these cycles continue? And as the markets get bigger, obviously these, these tendencies will, have a t will, will, will pass. But just like the NASDAQ that's been on the bull market for over 10 years, what goes up must come down. And so right now we got over enthusiastic. The general markets are going down. Cryptocurrency and NFTs are seen as tech investments, what we call risk on assets. And we're correcting. And what I've learned in the past is that in the period of correction, which can last six months, a year to two years, that's where fortunes are made. This is the time when everybody hates it and everybody's scared is the time to learn. The time to invest the money that you can lose, of course, but the time to learn to code, the time to understand the developments because the true projects with huge value, this is where they're made. This is where they last. This is where they're consolidated. They don't get wiped out. They get enforced because all the crap has been deleted and flushed out. And these are some of the topics we'll be addressing in the next sessions. Um, fad or not? Should I invest now or not? Is the discovery and the pain worth going through today or should I wait until this market becomes a little bit more mature? What are some of the use cases where people have gotten burnt? And should you have bought that board eight for two or three hundred thousand dollars? And what will it look in the future? These are some of the topics that we'll address investability, usability, interoperability, what's next for NFTs and crypto. Stay tuned to the next episodes.